Tech Talk of, of the fall quarter. Uh, we're talking about building on Canvas today. I'm Christina Bella with the NUIT communications team and have with me today's presenter, Vicki Geddes. Before we get started, if you're having any trouble hearing me or Vicki, make sure that your volume is adjusted. Uh, if you're using headset or speakers, uh, make sure that your volume is turned up as much as it will go. Also, make sure that you're using a wired internet connection if that's available. Um, and that you close any applications in the background that are connected to the internet, email, any other web browsers you might have open. We're going to do some demo today and that will just make sure you have the best uh, connection during the presentation. If you have a question at any time, you can type it into the Q&A box down here and we'll answer those throughout the presentation. After the presentation, we'll also give you an opportunity to download the PowerPoint. Uh, we're actually going to do a couple slides and then move right into the demonstration. So um, a lot of the PowerPoint that you can download later will have some links and some screenshots uh, talking about what we're going to uh, do during demonstration today. So that will be useful. Um, but before we get started, we have two quick questions that we'd like to ask you. And actually, let's switch over here. Uh, so, Vicki, you can start sharing your screen and I'll pull these poll questions in. So, our first question is, are you currently using Canvas for your courses? And I'll give everyone a moment to answer that question. It looks like some of you are, some of you aren't. Okay, great. And the second question I'm going to ask here is, have you attended a Canvas workshop? Any, I know they've had some in-person, some online, a uh, variety of different things. Uh, so I'll give you all a moment to answer that question. Okay, so a couple people have attended and a couple people have not. So hopefully you learned something new. We're also going to have some resources um, that people can, uh, if you're interested in attending a workshop later, there's some information in the uh, PowerPoint about that as well. Wonderful. And with that, I will hand it over to Vicki. Well, thank you, Christina. And I just wanted to say how honored I am <laughs> to be the very first tech talk of the season. It feels <laughs> like, you know, sort of a vote of confidence. Absolutely. Uh, there. So. Uh, most of you are uh, uh, somewhat seasoned with Canvas. I saw in uh, the, the uh, poll questions that you um, just answered. And so uh, our campaign last year was called Canvas is Here. So the idea is that Canvas is here and hopefully it's here to stay for a while because I don't really want to do another transition. <laughs> Um, and we've got about uh, 2,000, actually as of last Friday, we had 2,014 course sites active uh, for fall 2015, um, which is a higher number than we were ever seeing with Blackboard. Um, and so I hope that this is a sign that people are adapting to Canvas and using it widely. Uh, right now we have a site that has been provided for every single course that the registrar lists for uh, fall 2015. And you can expect that if your course is regularly listed by the registrar's office, it will show up in Canvas. If it is not a regularly uh, offered class that shows up in the registrar, you might need a custom site. And um, as Christina mentioned, we'll be uh, giving you the this PowerPoint. And so you will see that on the screen here it says custom sites can be requested. That's a link to the request form for custom sites. So once you've downloaded the PDF, you'll have all of these links. Uh, and then we also have another request form in case you're interested in filling out more forms. <laughs> um, if you have a multi-section course, so you're teaching perhaps a language course that has multiple sections, or a math course with multiple sections, if you want the sections to be linked in some way so that um, you could perhaps push out content to all of the sections at once, uh, we also have a form where you can do that linking. Um, and there are a couple of different ways to do the linking, but you'll see that on the form. And that's linked here on the PowerPoint as well. Um, and right now, we're beginning to uh, innovate a little bit. And so we're starting to work with Weinberg 
um, in providing Canvas course sites for advising. And so we haven't got it up and running yet, but I was told yesterday that we will by the end of uh, next week. And so if that works, and if we can figure out how to uh, make this work beyond just Weinberg, we'll be rolling this out to the entire uh, university. So if that's something that interests you, do let me know, um, because uh, we think that this could be a useful service to the university. Definitely. So for what we're seeing in Canvas, and we don't spend a lot of time you know, going through people's courses or anything, that's all private. <laughs> so, um, but what we've seen from people who have come to our workshops or consultations or our drop-in hours, that most people are pretty comfortable posting content in modules or using pages inside Canvas. Uh, people understand the concept of how if they put up an assignment or anything else with a due date, that that gets auto-populated onto the syllabus tool inside Canvas. Uh, most people seem to feel very comfortable with the discussion tool. And we're seeing some uh, nice uptake of uh, use of the speed grader, which is the grading tool inside Canvas. So those are, the, those are the basics. This is what I'm assuming you feel comfortable doing right now. If you need more help on any of these items, I would sign up for an introduction to Canvas workshop. Because in this session, we're going to move beyond those basics. Yep. So what I'm going to do is pretty soon is I'm going to stop sharing the PowerPoint and just go straight into Canvas and talk about some of the course design things that you can do, some ways that you can dress up the syllabus for your course, uh, some ideas for increasing student interaction, uh, how to, to, uh, to set up audio and video feedback, um, and uh, I'm going to do a quick demo of how Turnitin works. Um, and then in the, uh, the uh, PowerPoint, and when you download it as a PDF, you'll be able to see some of the apps that we are encouraging people to connect to Canvas. One of the nice things about Canvas, one of the reasons that the university chose it, is that it's got sort of the basics. But then if you want to extend it and add more things to it, it's pretty easy to do that. Great. And I wanted to say, too, thank you for everyone. Uh, when you registered, a lot of people answered the question about what you're most interested in learning about. So actually, we're going to take some of that input and, and use it when we talk through some of the demonstration today. Right. So from here on out, the, the PowerPoint is going in one direction. And um, we're going to go uh, onto my screen. And I will just demo probably what one thing from each area. So in terms of uh, course design, I'm going to demo uh, how to add an image. I can find the right. There we go. How to add an image uh, to a page in Canvas. Why add images? Well, they look nice, especially if it's a nice image. Uh, it adds visual interest to a page. It can actually extend the explanation of what you're doing, a graph. Uh, small video. These are all things that will help students understand the material that you're presenting better. Uh, in the PowerPoint, you'll see that uh, we have a front page of somebody's course where they've added a simple image and then the PDF. That's all they've got on the page. But this helps the students who have a number of campus courses you know, visually identify within a second, oh yes, I'm in this particular course. So, what I'm showing you here is a course that I'm a teacher in. And I've got a front page that says Building on Canvas Tech Talk, which you must admit is sort of boring. So let's edit this and add an image to it. So I went up to the Edit button. And now I'm in the Rich Content Editor, which should be familiar to you. And I'm just going to go down a space or two and then say that I want to embed an image or just come over here. This is the way I usually do it is when you come over to the right-hand side, and you'll see there's an area with three tabs. You want to insert content into the page. You want an image. You click on the Images tab. And it asks me which image I would like. But I don't want any of these images. I want to upload an image. And so it asks me to browse my computer. And so I'm going to click on Browse to find this image. 
And oh my gosh, there's the image. I have it right on my desktop, ready to go. And I just hit open, and you'll see. Once I hit upload, sorry, um, that it will take a second. And now I've got my image in there on the front page. So let's see what that looks like. So now to the student, to the faculty member, I've got this giant image on the page. I want to resize that, uh, which I can do by going back to edit, clicking on the image, and dragging the corner down quite a bit. Let's hit save on that. The Y fabric, well, because Canvas is a fabric, they have another product coming out shortly, which is called Tweed. Um, <laughs> and so I was thinking that we should get some different fabrics in here, you know, some silk, some taffeta or something as well. So now we've got an image on our home page. So the, the steps that I took to do that were First, I had created the page, and then I went in and I asked it to go to my images area, and then I uploaded a new uh, image file. If you're interested, you can go over to the files area, and you'll see that that image is now here in the file. So I, I want to use it again. I've got it here in the course. Great. And so that's essentially based on what you were saying earlier about the, the use of images in courses. I mean, that's the presentation of a picture is worth a thousand words. It helps students distinguish. It helps kind of communicate some ideas as well. Right. And if I had a graph uh, demonstration of how to do uh, experiment, mm -hmm. something like that, in those cases, you know, pictures are the words. They are right. the most important thing. And so it's a useful thing to be able to do to add a Page. And so you can add images to any pages, right? Absolutely. Great. Yes. Anytime that rich content editor mm -hmm. shows up, you can add a, an image to it. Okay. So um, in this course, I've arranged my information by modules. Mm -hmm. So for uh, the demonstration, like to add an image to a page, the steps are to create a page, add text to the page, and then add an image to the page. Mm -hmm. uh, so Second thing I wanted to talk about uh, is, or to demonstrate, is to uh, emphasize the idea that students use their smartphones. They also use tablets, but they really use their smartphones. Absolutely. And they use it, you use them to access Canvas. So we know from last year, uh, when we did surveys of students during the transition year, we asked them what percent of your daily use of Canvas is through a mobile device. Mm -hmm. And you can see here that about 60% of daily usage of student usage of Canvas mm -hmm. is through a mobile device. And on the whole, these are smartphones, smartphone ownership, slightly more, mm -hmm. well, actually many more iPhones than uh, uh, Android. Mm -hmm. um, faculty also use their smartphones. They don't use them as much as students, but mm -hmm. they still use them quite a bit. And so one of the other reasons that we chose Canvas as a uh, university mm -hmm. was that it does have mobile apps. So your students, when they start using Canvas, can download an app. You can download an app as a staff member, faculty member, that is the Canvas app. And they've got them for all the different kinds of platforms that are out there. But designing for mobile and designing for the web are actually Two different things. Yeah. So I actually have a relatively small screen. Uh, the viewers can't see that because mm -hmm. all they see is the screen share. But um, if I had a mobile device, it would be even smaller than this. And so one of the things that uh, we've seen that is a useful um, tip to know is that um, on the smaller screens, if you use the Canvas Pages mm -hmm. tool and plunk your content into there, it will resize automatically. Nice. If, on the other hand, you put a Word document or a PDF document into your files area and then link to it, uh, it doesn't necessarily resize as well. Mm -hmm. 
So here's an example of a Word document. This is a picture from my cell phone, which is the iPhone. Um, actually, it's an iPhone in need of charging, clearly. But <laughs> um, uh, where you can see that it just did not work as well as it should. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen the same with PDFs. So this probably sounds like a lot more work, but basically all you're doing is copying and pasting. So instead of uploading the file, you would create a page, copy the material mm -hmm. onto the page, and uh, hit save. And it's the difference, I, I imagine a lot of people in the audience today, if you have a smartphone or, and are looking at a web page, you know the difference between how easy it is to view a nice web page that's sized for the device you're using versus something where you have to scroll or images aren't appearing, like the image Vicki has on the screen right now. Images don't show up and text overlaps. Um, so it really does just make it a little bit easier to use for the students and for you based on looks like the survey you guys did earlier that a lot of faculty and staff use this, use mobile devices to access Canvas as well. Absolutely. So that's the first thing to be aware of when you're designing for mobile. The second is that this is, might be a little abstruse, but in the modules area, mm -hmm. one of the ways that you can organize material here is you can do indents. So if you wanted to say, oh, this is a heading area, like use pages, but then text headers, not indents, mm -hmm. you want your students, that kind of thing. You can see that that sort of orders the material and creates an outline mm -hmm. form. Um, the problem is, on a cell phone, you lose those indents. Mm. And so text headers become a better way to um, uh, uh, to organize mm -hmm. the material than those uh, uh, indents. That's a great tip. Uh, so I think there's one more thing under designing for mobile. And while you're talking about that, um, the mobility issue, someone had a great question that I think we're also going to touch about a little bit later. Um, can students use mobile devices for accessing discussion boards and participating in discussion? Yes. Discussions? Okay, great. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You can do almost everything um, through the app for the cell phone. Uh, there are a few small things you can't do, but it's also one of those areas that Canvas is continually uh, updating and uh, improving. Great. Um, so the other area that you want to be aware of with um, mobile is that some things don't work mm -hmm. on mobile devices, like Flash mm -hmm. doesn't work on an iPhone. Um, and so if you've got a video, often they don't work particularly well on Android mm -hmm. phones. So if you're adding material like that to your Canvas course, you might want to warn your students. Mm -hmm. Just add some text below or above saying, this video is in Flash. If you can't see it here, go to the website. Mm -hmm. You know, go yeah. on your laptop Use your computer. computer. Exactly. Yep. Um, or this video might not play on an Android mm -hmm. device. Similarly, go uh, uh, view it on your regular computer. Mm -hmm. um, and this was something I had learned at a, a conference. I don't think anybody here is using flashcard software. Mm -hmm. But if they are, often that's driven by flash. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's not going to work on a mobile device. So these things are not things where you know it's going to take a ton of extra work mm -hmm. on the instructor's part, but just being cognizant of how much the students use mobile to access their course material um, should be something that I would hope that faculty members uh, and instructors would, would want to do. Right. Um, and so the last point under designing for mobile is if you happen to have a smartphone mm -hmm. or a tablet, test your site. Yeah. So go Great. download the, the app and go take a look at your course. You mm -hmm. can also use that um, setting inside Canvas where you can um, be a test student mm -hmm. and go through the course as a test student. And you can just see, oh, you know, I've got a video. I forgot to warn them. Mm -hmm. Or um, you know, all these indents aren't going to make any mm -hmm. sense because you can't see them. Um, all right. And, and again, based on what it sounds like you guys found, a lot of faculty use mobile devices to access their own Canvas courses. So 
faculty can use their device to basically do everything you said, right? To build Absolutely. their pages. Yeah. yeah. So on the, as I know it's getting to the end or fall starting, but enjoy the nice days while you can. Sit outside side with your tablet, <laughs> test it out. If you don't feel like bringing your laptop. Um, and one of the things that uh, they keep clear when the uh, audience members uh, filled in the registration form mm -hmm. is they wanted to see a demonstration of how Turnitin mm -hmm. assignments work. Mm -hmm. And so um, I hadn't actually intended to do that, so I don't have anything specific, mm -hmm. but I'll just show you right now. Great. So Turnitin is a plagiarism checker. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically the way it works is it takes student submissions. If you enable Turnitin, takes student submissions and runs them through a plagiarism checker and then produces a score. Mm -hmm. And the score tells you how much material in the essay or whatever the student has turned in might have been plagiarized. Mm -hmm. It doesn't absolutely necessarily uh, identify it perfectly. But so it's a flag. It's a way for either the student or the instructor, depending on how you set it up, mm -hmm. um, to go back and take a look and make sure that the material has not been plagiarized. Mm -hmm. So to set up a turn it in assignment, Go to the assignments area and you add a new assignment. And we'll call this one turn it in, all one word because we don't like separate words anymore. <laughs> and so give them a long paper to turn in. And then down here in the settings area, we're going to give it some points. And then you'll see that one of your options here is enable turn it in submissions. And that's it. That's all you've got to do. That's if you easy. want to go and um, do the advanced settings, you can hit that advanced settings. This tells you, um, it gives you options on whether the students will be able to see basically that originality report, the plagiarism mm -hmm. detection. Um, you can give it to them immediately after the assignment is graded. After Due date or never. Cool, but <laughs> you could do that, and you can tell it what that you what you want them to compare against. So other student papers, internet database, journals, periodicals, publications. You know the default is compare against all of them, but you might have a special reason for choosing one and not the others. And then you can ask it to uh, basically ignore like bibliographic material, mm -hmm. things that appear inside quotes. You can also have it ignore small matches, you know, a ten word phrase, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and then you can choose whether this then goes into the Turnitin repository or whether it uh, stays out. That's great. And actually that addresses something I was personally wondering about is quotes and how it addresses that. Because obviously if you have a paper that includes a lot of quotes, it's going to show a high percentage of yes. So the important thing is actually remember to put quotation yes. marks around things. Right, yeah. Um, and then you go and you do your usual due date and so forth. Um, and then you hit save, publish, or save. And someone had a question about Turnitin. Um, is there a way as an instructor to manually submit a student's paper to Turnitin if you haven't? Yes, there is. Okay. Um, we call that, it, it, in Blackboard world, it was called direct submit. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll need to contact us. But basically, the way that uh, you do it is we'll set up a separate account for you on Turnitin's website. Mm -hmm. And because you're part of Northwestern and we have a license for Turnitin to cover the entire university, um, that Northwestern email will give you the ability to uh, do a direct submit uh, to, the, to the website. Great. So if you don't have all your students doing it, but you see one paper where you start worrying about question. it. Right, and you can do that. So all you need to do is write to um, consultant at northwestern.edu and mm -hmm. just say, I need a direct submit Turnitin account. I will set that up for you. Great. OK, so we've talked about adding images to a page. We've talked about designing for mobile. Um, and this is probably just me, but <laughs> I saw this article on um, the Chronicle of Higher Education's mm -hmm. website a while ago. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, yeah, which is uh, about designing engaging course documents. 
and um, says it, the, the author of the article says that you know it's hard to get students to actually read the syllabus. And um, I've actually seen posts on Twitter where people have put in you know little uh, questions in the middle of the syllabus just to check to see whether the students are reading them. You know, if you've read this far, please send me a picture of an elephant, that kind of thing. Um, and you know, if they get three pictures of an elephant rather than 50 uh, students who are enrolled. Um, and so I read through this article, and I invite you to do so as well, because it's actually a terrific article. Um, but the author uh, suggests that you use a tool called PictoChart, um, where uh, you can design mm -hmm. syllabi. So here's an example of a syllabus um, that has been designed using this tool, PictoChart. And you know this may be a little over the top <laughs> in terms of design and all the uh, so icons and so forth. Um, but I know if I were a student, I'd be a lot more inclined to read this and to remember where I saw the information um, than uh, if it were several pages mm -hmm. of the straight text. text. Yes. yes, which is unfortunately often what you see mm -hmm. uh, here. And I like this one. Come to <laughs> class. Absence is heard. Uh, PictoChart uh, is spelled strangely. It's P I K. Um, and uh, you can get a free account. Uh, I have a free account. I use it all the time. Um, and so if you ever get uh, uh, frustrated by the limited graphing abilities inside Excel, um, <laughs> uh, then you can go to PictoChart and have a lot more choices. And so this is the PictoChart um, interface. And they have, in fact, right here, uh, a syllabus template cool. that you can start using. Um, and these are free. There are ways, uh, if, they, if you want to spend money, there are ways to spend money on here <laughs> with some more extensive uh, templates. There are always ways to spend that money. But, but the free is, is free is nice, yeah. yes, and it's there. So um, cool. I showed that uh, article about uh, Syllabi to a faculty member right after I had seen it, and <laughs> he wrote back, "Puts mine to shame." <laughs> <laughs> sort of appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some cool syllabus um, designs, and even if you don't go the full picto chart, mm -hmm. uh, you, you might want to think about so what can I do to make those course documents that are absolutely necessary a little bit more. Well, and similar to the, your point earlier about adding an image to the, the main course page, sometimes it, can, it just helps memory, uh, just helps visually distinguish between different courses Absolutely. or random pieces of paper someone has in a bag. Right. Um, and uh, I saw also on the responses that a number of people were interested in giving audio feedback mm -hmm. to their students. And so this one is a little involved. The instructions are in the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. But once you've got it and you've done it once, it's really straightforward. So the way you do this is uh, if you have created an assignment, and this is an assignment, a final paper, um, I've set it up so that the students do this as a file upload. And you can see that I've actually got a submission here, I've got zero out of one submissions mm -hmm. graded. So if you're ever worried about or wondering, where are my student submissions once I've asked them to turn in a file, mm -hmm. they're there on the assignment page. So I can either download the submissions and then grade them sort of offline, you know, not inside mm -hmm. the Canvas interface, or I can go to SpeedGrader. So we're going to go to SpeedGrader. And here is, I've got one student in the class. And I have not yet graded her uh, paper, which looks an awful lot like the Northwestern <laughs> University staff handbook, but it was what I had handy. Funny that. Funny that, right. Um, and so you can use the usual speed grader tools um, here. So these are things like uh, commenting, drawing, so I can emphasize that. I can add a comment to something. Um, 
Yes. Hmm. But what I really want to show you is the audio and video feedback. So these comments, once I grade this, put a grade on it over here in this area, that grade will go into the gradebook. The students will be able to see the comments that I've made. Mm -hmm. You can also make overall comments here. Like that. <laughs> Um, but, you know, you can see this is an 80-page document. I don't really want to go through and write tons and tons of comments mm -hmm. and commentary um, or corrections on here. But I do want to give the student a better sense than just, oh, great handbook, mm -hmm. uh, that this was a good uh, effort on uh, her part. So what I'm going to do here is you see this tiny little button here that looks like a film strip and a uh, microphone. It says media comment. I'm going to hit that. And this might be a little tricky because I'm going to need to um, turn on my speakers in a moment probably. Um, so I can record media right now. Mm -hmm. In other words, I can record straight from my desktop. And so I'm going to choose the audio instead of the webcam, mm -hmm. uh, just because it's simpler. And say, and this asks me um, for access to my camera and microphone. And it will ask me every time I do this. Yeah, so it's not giving default access. It's right. Yeah. Uh, and it will take a minute. And it will say, OK, click anywhere to start recording. So uh, I need to think for a second, OK, what is it I need to say to this student? Now I've got it. Cho, I was really impressed with this paper. I thought you spent a little bit too much time on the history of the dark arts, uh, but and not quite enough time on Quidditch. But overall, it was a great effort. That's it. You can see that it's rendering down there at the bottom of the screen. That's pretty cool. And then I can hit save. And it's saving the recording. So now you'll see over here that there is a recording. Mm -hmm. So when I put a grade on this and the student retrieves it, mm -hmm. they'll see that there's a recording. So now I'm going to turn on my speakers for a second so that, um, let's see how this I just don't want to get feedback. So yeah, I hope not. <laughs> OK, we are going to get feedback. <laughs> but in theory. In theory, yes. What we'll do now is we'll play it, mm -hmm. and maybe, no, you're not going to hear it at all because it's going through my speakers. Um, but it would create feedback, so I'm sorry for that. That's right. But you, but you people hear can it. preview yes. before they submit it to the student, basically. Exactly. Okay. And if you don't like it, just hit X, and uh, you're done. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you would just delete it over here um, as well. Um, we've had faculty. Mm -hmm who find that this is a time saver mm -hmm. because they're not going and writing out a page's worth of mm -hmm. comments. We've had students say that this gives them a much a greater feeling of connection mm -hmm. to their instructors mm -hmm. because while you know we all prize the written word, mm -hmm. there's something really personal about hearing your instructor's voice yeah. uh, when they're reacting to your mm -hmm. work. Um, and so, you know, you don't have to do it. it it's just an extra thing mm -hmm. that you can do in Canvas that uh, takes advantage of media mm -hmm. in a way. Well, it's just interesting thinking back when I was an undergrad in grad school, this is a nice kind of compromise between just looking at handwritten comments versus having a sit down meeting with a professor to go through the final paper. This is just kind of a nice in between. In between mode, yeah. yeah, stop there, absolutely. Well, and you know, the, if you think about the time saving, yep. you know, if you've got any, you know, carpal tunnel going on, yeah. you don't necessarily want to write out that many comments. Yeah. Um, also depends on how fast of a typer you are. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the students never have to know that you say basically the same thing. To each right. Other. <laughs> uh, so that's that's it on the demonstration part. I wanted to leave enough time so that we could address any mm -hmm. questions that people had or demonstrate something if people had um, a question in particular that they wanted to see. 
Somebody made a good point. The uh, audio recording, uh, it also uh, gives you the option to add background music and sound effects. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen anyone do that, but if, if that works, please let us know. Yep. Um, someone asked, can you start and pause the audio feedback so comments can be added over time? I don't think so. I think it's a, just a one-shot one okay. deal. I think so. Can you add multiple audio comments? Or just one? Yes. Okay. So here I am in the commentary area. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got the Adobe Connect thing, which I can't seem to move. There it is. Um, I can, you can see down here in the right hand corner mm -hmm. where it says submit con comment. I can do another. Uh, media comment mm -hmm. there, so you can do as many as you like. So if you've read the first three pages mm -hmm. and you want to comment on that, you know, go ahead and then do another one. Great. Um, so we had a couple more questions. Um, someone asked, can you show a, a sample layout um, standardized as a, uh, to do as a module weekly? Oh, yeah. Uh, I can. Um, this will take me uh, just a moment mm -hmm. to do. And actually, while you're doing that, um, maybe this is another question I think we can address. Um, someone asked uh, for beginners in Canvas, best resources they can go to, uh, oh, other training. That I they love questions like that. <laughs> it's like it's like you are, can read my mind. Yep. Um, I have to log in as an admin for a sec, and then I will show you the answer to both of those questions in one place. Uh, I could spell. So we have something called the Canvas Learning Center, which is a public course mm -hmm. in Canvas. It's linked, um, I think, on the uh, having a, the very last slide, building mm -hmm. on Canvas, have a question. It's the first of the three resources mm -hmm. listed there under additional resources. Um, and what we've tried to do in here, I need to make this little key again, um, is uh, answer what we assume will be the most basic questions mm -hmm. about setting up your course in Canvas. So I would almost always go here mm -hmm. to see if uh, your questions can be answered here. And then you also had somebody who asked, can we see a sample course mm -hmm. layout? And believe it or not, inside <laughs> this, we have some sample courses. And so uh, we've got ones that are organized by page. We have ones that are organized by module, um, and then some other ones. And actually, that course that I showed you originally, the mm -hmm. uh, one with the image on it, mm -hmm. I took that from here. This is her sample course um, uh, with just the image and mm -hmm. the syllabus on it. Uh, but let me go back and. Here's a course that is organized by module mm -hmm. by week. So uh, you can see that he's got the printable version of the syllabus right mm -hmm. here on the home page. And then here in the modules area, he has it session by session. Session one, session two, session three, great, and so forth. And then if we go back to that list of sample courses again, there is another one that is done with pages, mm -hmm. but is also a week by week organization. And he's just got these pages linked on the home page here. And all of these sample courses, you know, none of them have any student information, and we have asked the instructors for permission mm -hmm. to uh, show them. So don't worry that we're out there trolling, <laughs> <laughs> looking for classes. Right, right. they're great examples to use. Exactly. Uh, although, if we do contact you, please. We we are Let so impressed with what you've done. Exactly right. Are there any other? Yes. Questions um, that I can yep. use? Someone else asked, um, actually, well, two questions. Um, so one question was about adding multimedia to a course site. 
Got it. Um, and then the other question is, back to the audio comments, um, someone wondered if you can add audio comments to different sections of the assignment or if it's just general audio comments to the whole thing. Like it looks like you could kind of highlight mm -hmm. or circle things. Right. So it, no to, answer to, to your mm -hmm. second question in terms of uh, putting a, adding an audio comment at a specific point. But what you could do is when you get to a certain point, you know, highlight something and say, you know, see first audio comment. So that well, would include the student that this is the area where you're Perfect. doing the first audio comment. But no, the audio comments all show up over here as uh, kind of bulk. You know, yeah, the bulk just refers to all of the paper. Got it. But since you can do multiple comments, you can kind of portion them out. Is here's the first sec. Here's my comments on the first section. Right. Great. Exactly. So you know, your introduction area, your mm -hmm. body area, your conclusion area. And then you also had somebody who was asking about um, adding multimedia. Mm -hmm. Right. And so basically, in Canvas, anywhere that you see the rich content editor, so that box, mm -hmm. um, show up, you can add multimedia. So here's a multimedia page. Mm -hmm. And here's this little film strip again. And so if I want to say, you know, I can either record mm -hmm. just exactly the way we did it a second ago with um, the audio comment. Here is your choice on using the webcam or just a microphone. Mm -hmm. um, or you can upload media. So if you have a video file or an audio file on your computer, uh, you can upload it right there. There are some limits in terms of size. Um, let's see if I happen to have a... Hmm don't have one easily available. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to demo yeah. that part. Um, but it's similar to uploading any other type of file. But it's similar to uploading any other kind of file. It will take a couple of seconds for it to render so that they can then play inside Canvas. If you've got a really large file, the better way to do this is to uh, link to it rather than embed it in Canvas. And you can uh, link to it if you've got it in YouTube, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can still set up a YouTube private channel. Mm -hmm. If you don't like that, let us know, and we can set you up with Box. Okay. So Box is one of these apps mm -hmm. that connect um, to Canvas, and you find them by going to the Settings area, mm -hmm. and then actually to the Apps. <laughs> okay, here we go, to the Apps tab. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are a number of external apps. Box is one of them. Right now, uh, we're just getting started helping people use Box. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some great advantages for using Box because there really is no limit on your storage. And there isn't now, actually. They just are getting ready to announce that uh, completely unlimited. unlimited, unlimited yeah. right. And so if you have a giant video, mm -hmm. um, although then you've got to start wondering about why you have a giant video, right. um, you know, Box would be a place to put it in and then we would show you how to do the integration. So you put a link to it from Canvas, your students would click on the link, they would see it in Canvas, but it's actually being, it's actually coming from your Box mm -hmm. folder. The other advantage to doing it that way is that if you wanted to use it again in another semester, mm -hmm. another quarter, um, you've got it. Right. Sitting there in box, you don't have to move it from one campus class to another. Great. Okay. Uh, let's see, I think. Hmm. So we have a good question from looks like a student. Mm -hmm. um, someone had a question. Do you have to be logged in for discussions to be sent to the professor? Uh, the professor had uh, them build a course with the discussion, um, but they haven't used it, so how can the professor monitor discussions? So discussions uh, usually have to be set up by the instructor. Mm -hmm. So I haven't got any discussions 
going here, but mm -hmm. if as a student you would like to suggest to your faculty that they use the discussions, like just drop them a note or mention it after okay. class, setting up a discussion is really, really easy. You go to this blue discussion mm -hmm. uh, button and you create a title. Uh, and put in a prompt of some sort like that. And again, if you want to, you could actually do this as a, a media file. You mm -hmm. could record your discussion post instead. Um, and then you can set this up, mm -hmm. you know, so that it, uh, you can add an attachment, you can create this group discussion, you can have it timed, or you can just save it and Great. publish it, and then students can start responding to it. Okay. All right. Let's see, I think that covered all the questions. Um, and again, we could. There's so much more that we could go into, and some very cool stuff um, in the PowerPoint as well. Um, but with that, I'm actually going. We're going to wrap things up unless there are any more questions. I have a couple of things um, that I've mentioned to people. We're going to follow up with you after the event. Okay. Um, but if you do have more questions, feel free to uh, keep typing them into the Q&A box. Um, and actually, Vicki, can you pull up the PowerPoint really quick? I just want to point up, point out the um, where to get help slide. Ah, yes. Okay. So if you have any, mm -hmm. well, I should actually show this in <laughs> PowerPoint mode. Um, if you need help mm -hmm. with something in Canvas that is Canvas related. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how you know, this or that. Mm -hmm. um, we have 24-7 support from Instructure, which is mm -hmm. the company behind Canvas. And they are really, really good. They solve about 60% of the questions that come to them on their first call. Um, and they have phone support. They have uh, online chat support. You can email them with um, a question. And every time I've dealt with them, they've been incredibly pleasant mm -hmm. and very, very helpful. And if it's something that they don't know how to do because it's something that's Northwestern related, they'll kick it back to us. And we try to be as pleasant and as helpful as they are, but they really do have us beat sometimes mm -hmm. on um, pleasantness for friends. Yeah. Um, and uh, then if you have a question that's much more Northwestern well, mm -hmm. related, um, come to Northwestern. So go to consultant.northwestern.edu. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a net ID problem or one of these things about integrating one of the apps, mm -hmm. we're the ones who can help you with that. Um, we also have training sessions. We have them in Evanston. We have them in Chicago. We have them online. We have basic you know, introduction to Canvas, mm -hmm. but we also have things like using multimedia in Canvas yep. or discussions in Canvas. Um, and then we also have these additional resources that we've linked, such as the Canvas Learning mm -hmm. Center. We have a similar one for students, the Canvas Student Center. And then Canvas itself has a treasure trove of guides. Um, and I use those all the time, and we refer people to the guides. Canvas updates its system every mm -hmm. three weeks. So they are the best source for that Great. kind of documentation. Perfect. OK. Uh, so with that said, um, I'm going to ask for a couple of quick feedback questions, and then I'll show everybody where you can download the PowerPoint um, that uh, has information about everything Vicki demonstrated, plus a lot more. Um, so stick with us for a couple of questions, and, and I'll show you where you can download that. So our first question today is, did you learn something new during the event? Uh, we always hope you learn something new, um, especially since this is kind of a going beyond the basic session. Uh, we really hope you got something uh, helpful out of this. Great, it looks like most people did learn something new, which we always like to see. Wonderful. All right, and move on to the second question, which is, uh, do you plan to apply any of the information you learned during today's event? And again, there's so much um, within Canvas that people can do with their courses. Uh, hopefully there's some tip trick uh, that uh, you found helpful that uh, you can use in your courses. And if you have questions about how to apply any of this stuff, um, do contact the Support Center, contact Vicki's team. Uh, they are more than happy to help you 
use and implement any of these uh, tools. It, it's such a great, Canvas is such a great tool with so many different options. Um, sometimes it can be hard to, to figure out what the best way is to use all this great stuff, um, but they are happy to help you with that. All right, and our final question is, well, on a scale of one to five, how would you rate the overall quality of today's event? And again, talk about direct feedback. <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> um, but I will say we we do um, take your feedback and use it to make changes for upcoming events. Uh, so if there's anything we could do to improve these events, we know they're uh, you take time out of your day to attend. Uh, so let us know if there's anything we could do, anything else we can cover for you, uh, and we're happy to to make those changes and take those suggestions. And actually, this event came out of some people who said, um, "Okay, what else can I do in Canvas?" We had several events last year about uh, Canvas in general and the the Blackboard transition, and a couple people said, "What? Okay, cool. Now, what else can I do?" Uh, so we're always happy to get that feedback. Okay, great. That's wonderful. All right. So with that said, uh, to download the PowerPoint. Uh, all you have to do is click on this PDF file up here and click download a file right underneath and it will download, uh, it will open in a new browser window I believe. Um, so you can download it from there. We'll also have a recording of the event we did today uh, available on YouTube uh, later today or tomorrow and uh, you'll get a link to that recording uh, since you registered for today's event. Um, so you can watch that at your leisure. Uh, and we'll also have a copy of the PDF available for download on the NUIT website as well, and you'll get a link to that as well. Uh, and with that, um, I will say thank you so much, Vicki, for well, a great thank presentation. You, and thank you all for attending. Uh, hopefully you all are going to have a wonderful afternoon. It's supposed to be 80 today, which is incredible. Oh, no way. I know, right? Um, I'm eating lunch <laughs> Exactly. Take it, take it an opportunity while you can. Um, but again, thank you all so much for attending. Uh, if you're interested, our next Tech Talk is in two weeks. We're going to be covering uh, a new social media tool at Northwestern about Yammer um, and uh, the new, um, some changes to Link. All right, thanks so much.